So who's the puppet master in this situation? And who's pulling whose strings upon the world leaders? Because this is VFI news and even more late breaking news as we study what's happening in Ukraine and the global situation. What is the late breaking news right now? along together with what's been happening this whole week concerning Russia and its attack on the Ukrainian citizens. For Prime Minister Naftali Bennett of the State of Israel said, I'm talking about untold loss of life. Millions of refugees act before it's too late. That's right. It's a warning to the world's leaders. Act before it's too late. There is a terrible war going on in Ukraine, Bennett said. War is horrific. We in Israel have had our fair share of wars, and I can tell you one big lesson. Wars are easy to start and very difficult to finish. Things are looking bad on the ground right now, he continued, but it's important to understand that if world leaders don't act quickly, it can get much worse. I'm talking about untold loss of life total destruction of the Ukraine, millions of refugees, and it's not too late to intervene. It's the responsibility of the major players in the world to act rapidly, to get the two sides out of the battlefield and to the negotiating table, the prime minister concluded. I applaud Naftali Bennett for those words, but the leaders of this world cannot just talk cheaply, they must act with action quickly. Now, on the other side of the coin, Ukrainian leaders are like the Maccabees. They're fighting back and they actually are using this opportunity under tremendous loss of life and bombardment to reverse the tide of the war. Quoting a top Ukrainian official, within a few days, we hope to be on the offensive. Can you imagine that? They're being bombed by the worst destruction ever, carpet bombing by Vladimir Putin, who's become a very big despot to the whole world now and a threat to world peace and threatening nuclear war. And Alexei Aristovich, advisor to the head of the Ukrainian presidential office, has stressed that the Ukraine, Ukraine will hold its ground in future negotiations with Russia. Aristovich emphasized the high morale of the Ukrainians, both soldiers and civilians. Quote, people are in high spirits, he said. There's adrenaline in the air and a real sense that we want to strike a critical blow at the Russians. Everyone feels that way, he added. Everyone is optimistic and ready to fight. And you know, some of these captured Russian soldiers who thought they were just going on military exercises or whatever their officers were ordering them to do, they're crying, they're calling home to their mothers, their parents, and they're saying, we didn't want this, we didn't come to kill people. And thank God there are those amongst the Russians who are a remnant and talking against the orders that they have been sent to do. So actions speak louder than words, don't you all agree? Because when Naftali Bennett says that we need to act and do something, Israel is doing something about it, although quietly. NATO member states announced that they are shipping modern weapons to Ukraine. Israeli-made weapons are also on their way, even as Jerusalem walks a diplomatic tightrope following Russia's invasion of the European nation. On Sunday evening, the Netherlands announced that it would send 50 Panzerfaust, three anti-tank weapon systems with 400 rockets and 200 Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. Amsterdam will also supply 100 sniper rifles and 3,000 additional munitions. But I have to be honest with all you, this should have already happened before this war started. So in some ways, it's too little too late, but I guess better late than never. What I want to emphasize, though, is something that has come out throughout the whole theme of this incursion by Russia and this whole situation of the defense of the Ukrainian people and President Zelensky, who, by the way, is Jewish. And in case any of you misunderstood comments about neo-Nazism in Ukraine, and we know a bit about its past history, this Vladimir Zelensky, president of the Ukraine, he is Jewish. His grandfather fought the Nazis in World War II, and many of his relatives were killed in the Holocaust. And he is standing up against a dictator, and he is brave because he knows what will happen if he doesn't stand in defense for Europe and for world peace and the global situation today. 
So he is truly a modern-day Maccabee. And many left-wing, right-wing Jews all look at President Zelensky this way. Quote Molly Crabapple, what a name, Crabapple, a prominent leftist writer and artist, said in a tweet, quote, as a Jew, it is impossible not to feel proud of the courage, dignity, and defiance shown by Zelensky at this moment. So you see, it's affecting all people in all walks of life. And for many Jews watching the Ukraine, it reminds them of Hanukkah. Although we're not celebrating Hanukkah now, maybe we will see another Hanukkah miracle. One week ago, Jews outside of the Ukraine just knew Zelensky as the world leader on the other end of a perfect phone call that resulted in the impeachment of President Donald Trump. But now, after days of watching Zelensky balance humor and gravitas while rallying his fellow Ukrainians to rebuff the army invasion, they know him as a contemporary Jewish hero. And we need more heroes like that. I applaud you, President Zelensky, and you're welcome to have Shabbat dinner at our home with your family anytime in the future. Zelensky gives modern Maccabee energy, Peter Fox, a writer, wrote on Twitter. That history can be seen as an apt comparison to what's happening in the Ukraine, and it's one of the several reasons that Zelensky's leadership is resonating so much with Jews the world over. What's next? Well, Russia, who claims that Zelensky and his whole team are Nazis and all that, and they want to denazification it, uh, to be honest, that's how Satan works. He accuses others of what he himself is. And we see that all this rhetoric of President Vladimir Putin, the richest man in the world, I hear, who has a 190-room mansion. My goodness, he should be housing refugees. Anyways, besides that, we won't go that way. But look, he is claiming the Ukrainians that he has to denazification of it. But he himself is like Satan in this situation now, accusing those of doing evil that he himself actually is the perpetrator of evil. And he has shown his real colors and is a dictator. Here we see that Russia struck the Babiyar Holocaust Memorial site in Ukraine and Russian missiles and shells struck the site where 33,000 Jews were buried, along with gypsies and others that the Nazis put to death in the area of Kiev in the Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky took to Twitter to condemn the attack, saying to the world, what is the point of saying never again for 80 years? If the world stays silent when a bomb drops on the same site of Babinar, Zelensky wrote, at least five were killed. History is repeating itself. These villains are killing Holocaust victims for a second time. Natan Sharansky, who was known as a refusenik and led the way for a million Russians to leave the Soviet Union, former head of the Jewish Agency and current chairman of the Babiyar Holocaust Memorial Advisory Board, slammed the attack and slammed Russian Vladimir Putin. Quote, Putin seeking to distort and manipulate the Holocaust to justify an illegal invasion of a sovereign democratic country is utterly abhorrent. Everybody say that word. It's abhorrent. It is symbolic that he starts attacking Kiev by bombing the site of Babinyar, the biggest of the Nazi massacres. Yes, it was the biggest mass grave in world history from what I understand. The memorial site's leadership condemned Putin's use of language related to the Holocaust to justify his invasion of the Ukraine. As experts who work with Holocaust research and commemoration, we are deeply outraged that the aggressor country has used genocidal rhetoric to justify its shameful actions. Russia has vulgarly instrumentalized anti-Nazi rhetoric and is trying to take on the role of a fighter against Nazism. But on the contrary, they're actually an image of what the Nazis did to their populations. And I think we need to pray that the horrors of the Holocaust will never be forgotten. We need to teach it to our children, teach it to our grandchildren. You need to do so in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in America, and all over the world so that we will never forget. Well, last but not least, and this is very interesting, and we need to put a, a face to this so we can understand better the workings of what goes on behind the scenes. As Israel is also seeking to be a mediator in case called upon, since we have had contacts in the past between 
Prime Minister Netanyahu, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, and Vladimir Putin and uh, his leadership, uh, together with the Ukrainian leadership, were playing a very careful diplomatic tightrope, as I mentioned. But also, there are other players on the scene, and one is the owner of the Chelsea Football Club in Great Britain. Now, a lot of Brits have taken actions against uh, these uh, oligarchs and these Russian billionaires, such as Roman Abramovich is. But I have to tell you, this is one man, one Russian, who, yes, has been a friend of Putin, but he's also a great lover of Israel, a great lover of many Christian people, and he's acting as a peacemaker between Ukraine, who called upon Roman to get involved in the peace talks because of his connection with Vladimir Putin. So we have to be careful before we quickly point the finger and accuse everybody of doing evil just because they're Russian. That's wrong, because there's a remnant of people in each nation that seek righteousness, and there are those that are unrighteous. So we have to pray for these peacemakers and these players on the chessboard. And he was recently in Belarus assisting talks at Kiev's request. Yes, the Ukrainians requested from Roman, who's a Russian Jew, yes, who's now selling the Chelsea team to be correct, and he's doing his part in the situation, and I'm sure he's not just talking, he's acting and putting money to help the Jewish refugees out of the Ukraine if necessary. Where was this borderline peacemaking going on between Belarus and the Ukraine, between the Russians and and the Ukrainians, it was in the border town of Gomel. Guess what Gomel means to me? That's where my mother's mother, my grandmother was from, Gomel in Belarus. And my grandfather was from Lviv in the western Ukraine part. So I have a little bit of heritage to look at in this whole thing. So delegations from these countries met together and not much has happened and we don't know all the details, but we know that after this first round of talks, Vladimir Putin was doing terrible bombing and destruction across the Ukraine. So I don't have much hopes in the peace talks, but let us close with a prayer this week in VFI News. Lord, we just ask you to watch after your people. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters throughout all these countries and pray that you will find and institute a peaceful solution and help the Ukrainians overcome this onslaught against their people. And we ask this in the mighty name of Yeshua. God bless Israel and God bless the nations and the remnant of your people until the coming of our Messiah. Amen.